Eric Smith was just 13 years old when he committed murder. On the 2nd of August in 1993, Eric Smith was riding his bike to a summer camp, when he noticed four-year-old Derek Roby walking alone to that same summer camp. He approached Roby and lured him into the woods. Smith then strangled Roby, smashed a large rock on his head, undressed Roby, and sodomized him with a tree limb. Smith claimed in his 2014 parole hearing that he inserted the stick in order to ensure death. But Roby's death was determined to be blunt trauma to the head, with contributing asphyxia. Eric Smith was arrested for this horrific crime, and was convicted of second degree murder. He was sentenced to the maximum term then available for juvenile murderers a minimum of nine years to life in prison. He contributed his actions to having been bullied by older children in high school, and by his own father and sister. He confessed that he took out his rage on Roby, and was worried that Roby might tell on him, so he killed him. Smith is still in prison to this day. The shock turned to disbelief when it had emerged that James had been brutally murdered by two ten-year-old boys, Robert Thompson and John Venables. On the 12th of February, 1993, a two-year-old toddler by the name of James Bulger was savagely beaten to death by two ten-year-old boys at the time, John Venables and Robert Thompson. This case caused great public outcry, as Venables and Thompson became the youngest convicted murderers in the UK. CCTV surveillance showed the two boys scouring and observing children, apparently selecting a target. When they fixed their eyes on two-year-old James Bulger, the two boys took him out of the shopping centre while Bulger's mother was momentarily distracted. What followed next was a sickening beating. Venables and Thompson dropped Bulger on his head early into their two and a half mile journey. When the boys arrived at the rail tracks, they began torturing James Bulger. The two boys threw paint in the toddler's left eye, kicked and stomped on him, threw bricks and stones at him, and dropped an iron bar on his head. Venables and Thompson then laid the beaten toddler across the railway tracks, in hopes the train would hit him and make his death appear to be an accident. A train did hit Bulger and ripped his body in half. The abduction was seen by 38 witnesses, but not one of them intervened. The two boys were imprisoned until they were 18. They were released on parole under new identities. David Brom grew up in Minnesota to a Catholic family and was only 16 years old when he committed multiple murders. In February of 1988, David Brom killed his parents, brother and sister with an axe. It was believed that Brom's motive for his killings stemmed from a fight he had had with his father over the songs he listened to. He recalled how he hit his dad with an axe. He kept on hitting him with an axe, and his dad kept on getting up. He then went into his mother's room, and hit her with an axe, and then went to his brother's room. Lastly, he saw his sister standing over their mother in the hallway, at which point he attacked them both. These cold-hearted callous crimes resulted in Brom being convicted of first-degree murder. He was given three consecutive life sentences, which he is still serving to this day. At the age of just 15, Kipland Kinkle, a student at Thurston High School in Oregon, was expelled for being in possession of a loaded, stolen handgun that he had bought off a friend. Kinkle and his friend were arrested and released from police custody on charge of possession of a stolen firearm. Kinkle was told by his father that he would be sent to military school if he did not change his behaviour. After hearing this news, Kinkle proceeded to retrieve his .22 rifle from his bedroom. He came back downstairs and went into the kitchen, where his father was sitting drinking coffee, and he then proceeded to shoot him in the back of the head. He waited for his mother to come home, and then shot her twice in the back of the head, three times in the face, 
and once in the heart, after telling her that he loved her. Kinkle then rigged the house with explosives. On the 21st of May, 1998, the day after Kinkle's expulsion and murder of his parents, Kinkle, who was fully armed, approached Thurston High School and started opening fire in the patio area and cafeteria. He killed two students and injured 25 others before seven students intervened and disarmed Kinkle while he was reloading. He was arrested immediately by police and sentenced to 111 years in prison with no chance of parole. As a teenager, Edmund Kemper was already showing signs of a sociopath. He had an exceptionally high IQ, an interest in torturing animals, and a deeply troubling relationship with his mother. At the age of just 15, Kemper fatally shot and killed both of his grandparents, claiming later on that he only did this to see what it felt like to kill grandma. He was sent to a Tascadero State Hospital, a maximum security facility for mentally ill convicts for his heinous crimes. At the age of 21, he was released, but his crimes did not stop there. Kemper went on to murder eight women, including his own mother, whom he decapitated and used her head as a dartboard. He would often take his victims' lifeless bodies back to his home and would engage in necrophilia. He was branded as the co-ed killer and the co-ed butcher, and due to his size and intelligence, standing at 6 foot 9, weighing over 300 pounds, and with an IQ of about 140, his victims didn't stand a chance. Edmund Kemper confessed to his crimes and turned himself in. He was charged with eight counts of first degree murder and received eight concurrent life sentences. When asked by the judge what he thought his punishment should be, Kemper said that he should be tortured to death. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please show your support by leaving a like and sharing this video, as it really does help us a lot. Don't forget to comment below too, and we will pin up the best comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video from us. Lastly, for daily facts and more, follow all of our social media accounts, which are on screen and in the description. Thanks, and until the next video.